I'm presenting today a project that we've been working on for the last four years, I'd say. Uh, the idea is that reuse is a set of best practices to make uh, licensing easier, free software licensing. Free software is all about licensing, licenses that grant for freedoms, therefore it's right, very important that uh, developers, that users, reusers are aware of the chosen licenses. So we have a few typical issues with licenses. And uh, probably all of you know these issues. I will just quickly go over them since our time is quite limited. We have often missing information about who, what's the license, who's the copyright holder, uh, perhaps for the whole project, perhaps for single files where you cannot be certain which license, which copyright holder, um, sorry, uh, uh, file is affecting. Um, for reusers using code by other uh, people, it's perhaps quite simple, depending on, on the structure, to overlook uh, a chosen license. So if you're a developer, you set the conditions for reuse, so you want that reusers are actually following the conditions under which you share your code. Um, and sometimes it's quite hard, or it's quite simple, basically, to, to overlook this license and these conditions. Um, the problem also is affecting how to deal with multiple licenses. It's quite common that uh, a software these days doesn't only contain code under one license, because you wrote it all yourself perhaps, but you use assets by third parties, JavaScript code in the uh, sense of um, uh, websites, but you might also have icons by, by artists. Um, you have license ambiguity, which is another problem, like which version exactly of the GPL, the um, general public license, are you actually using here, having in front of you, is it two, is it three, which exceptions, and so on. So there are many special rules. And in all cases, especially for communities, contributors need some kind of training. And so you have to invest a lot of time in uh, getting them on board and telling them your best practices. And speaking of best practices, we have a lot of conflicts there. So many different approaches, so many different ideas how to tackle these. Unfortunately, they're often conflicting and most often not really solving the issue. So in the end, we are in a position where it's for users, for reusers, for legal officers and companies, for communities, like this. It's really annoying, right? You have licenses, licensing, and it's like, why? Why does it have to be so complicated? So in 2017, we sat down at the FSFE, together with a few other uh, contributors in this field, and thought, how can we make copyright and licensing easier for everyone? And with everyone, we are not only speaking about legal professionals who know their stuff, but actual developers who have, want to spend their free time on creating free software and actually do not want to be burdened with uh, like all these legal efforts. The result was reuse. So reuse has a few principles that I would just quickly skim here. Um, the idea is that we want to make it easy to find copyright and licensing information for every single file and repository. So what we see these, still these, these days is like you have a single license file or copying file in a repository and you're not certain like, it, does it apply to all files or like also these icons by a third party. So we want to make it easy to have this information available that you can really say this file is under this and that license from this copyright holder. But we also want to avoid silos, like no external databases or databases in general, no websites that can go offline or which you cannot access if you don't have internet. So the idea is that we store this information directly inside of the repository. Um, the information should be readable not only by humans but also by machines. Other approaches have been tackling the one or the other side. Um, but we also don't want to reinvent the wheel. So there are some best practices, there are some initiatives. We try to be compatible wherever it's possible. And most importantly, we want to make licensing easy and fun for developers. So again, not only for the legal professionals and getting complicated and so legal, but no, developers should be able to license their code, apply their copyright or communicate their copyright in normal development routines, like right? so really developer focused. Yeah. So the idea of reuse is um, that we have three simple steps. Um, I will go in the next few slides over these like manually, theoretically, so you can see what's the whole logic. Um, we can also run this all with a tool uh, that I would also like to present here. We are too limited in time. You can ask me 
afterwards and I give you a demo. Um, so the ideas of these three simple steps are that you, first of all, choose and provide the license text. So that you settle down on one license and provide the full license text. Then the more complicated part that you add copyright and licensing information for every file. Um, yeah, so that we have a number of options which we will see. And the third step, again, is easy. You gotta confirm whether your project then is Wheels compliant already. Uh, if not, then you go back to step two, basically. So the first step, choose and provide licenses. That should be quite obvious. Uh, actually, it's a hard choice which license do I take. So for new projects, uh, we ask people to really think about this hard. And you save this license text, so the full conditions of reuse, you save in a dedicated licenses folder that we have. And not only just put it here on the random name, but following the SPDX license identifier. What's SPDX? It's a project whose main contribution to the community is to provide unique identifiers for every license so that you can no longer confuse the different GPL versions, but that you have a unique identifier. And in this case, we chose the GPL 3.0 or later license, and we save it under the same name under this identifier, which you can find on the SPDX website in the licenses folder. Then the second step is to add copyright and licensing information to all files. So we have two parts of information, the license, and again here we use the license identifier and use the SPDX license identifier tag for this. Um, and you add the copyright holder. Can be one, can, de can de be multiple ones. So in this example, we have a file here. Um, as a commentator in, in this file, uh, we have a GPL 3.0 or later as a license. And uh, you have two copyright holders, namely Jane Doe and uh, Foo Bar. And we use different ways how to uh, com like use these copyright texts. So we also support these more traditional copyright, C symbol, lines that you can use. So again, try to be backward compatible. What can you do if you cannot edit the file directly? So ideally the information would be in the file because then if you copy the file to another place or to your own repo, you would conserve this information. But sometimes it's not possible. You have a binary file like a picture or you have a JSON file that does not support in-file comments. So in this example, we have a picture called cat.jpg. So you can just create a plain text file with the same name and appended by .license. Inside of this file, you write the very same information that we've seen in the previous step, uh, namely a license identifier and the copyright text or the copyright line. Um, now what do you do if you have a, let's say a directory and there are 500 icons files in there, like for your application? Now you could, of course, create 500.license files in addition. Needless to say that this is not really wished for. So we offer a third option to communicate this information, namely the DEP5 file. DEP5 is a, a format, a specification by the Debian project, which we again landed here. Uh, yeah, we try to reuse those things. And here we have a plain text file in a dedicated location. And we say basically all files in the IMG folder, and now the asterisks. All files are with the copyright of the create artist, and now are under a different license because we took them from someone else. Let's say here in this uh, Creative Commons uh, attribution and the version 4.0. Again, here using the SPDX license identifier. So this way, with these three options, we can cover all kinds of files in a repository. And you for yourself can decide Ideally, I want to write it in a, in a commentator so that the information is as close to the files as possible, or using the .license file, or using the .dep5 file. So we cover a lot of use cases here. The third step is, again, probably the, the simplest one. Confirm reuse compliance. So this is done via a helper tool that we provide. Uh, the reuse helper tool, um, it's free software, obviously. It's uh, written in Python. Um, you can install it as a com command line tool. It's usable on uh, all Linuxes, on uh, Windows, and also Mac OS, as we know. And one of the main commands of this tool is to run a lint. So you run, go to your repository, clone it or have it there, and it runs reuse lint. So the tool goes over all files in your repository and checks whether it finds information about this file in one of these three locations. 
And that's done really rapidly. Like if you run Reuse Lint on a normal laptop on the Linux kernel, uh, I don't know, 80,000 files, takes you roughly one minute or so. So this tool is quite quick. The Reuse Helper tool with this Lint command can also be included in a CI pipelines, for instance. So once you have your project made Reuse compliant, you can put it in the CI pipeline and with one check, you can see whether a pull request, for instance, or the new commit does negatively affect the Reuse compliance. And you can use it for many more processes here as a pre-commit hook or so. In this example, uh, we run the Reuse lint on this very small um, project here with only six files. And it reports to you, well, we have here three licenses, CC BY 4.0, we have the CC0. In this example, we have one file for whatever reason there, and we have the GPL uh, also here. And so for all files, um, there is copyright and licensing information found. In the end, this means your wheels compliant with this project. So this is now the starting situation of this hypothetical, very simple project. Um, you have these six files here. You have a, a few binary files that we've seen before, the cat and the dog picture. Now, traditionally, like what you would see today is that people just add the license file there. But as you know, we have here now files under from different copyright holders, different licenses. So it would be really hard to reflect the situation uh, with the existing standards. That looks a little bit larger, but that's the effect of the reuse tool or the reuse uh, yeah, initiatives or the reuse best practice being adapted. So we are having here in this example, I mean, there are different variations. You can say, well, we have here now a license file for the cat picture, a license file for the, for the dog picture uh, with this information. Um, we have uh, all the license text files here, full, fully downloaded, um, included there cleanly in a separated folder so they don't clutter your, your repository. And the other files here, the three text files, the C file, make file, and markdown file, they carry all this information as a comment header in their specific uh, yeah, comment syntax. So the cool thing about the Reuse tool, unfortunately we cannot uh, peek at it right now, is that it automatically detects the, the, the common syntax. And uh, yeah, so it's quite easy. Um, there are also commands to make files reuse compliant in, with just a few commands. So we try here to go many steps uh, towards developers. So that is quite natural and easy to use. Reuse has a number of components. Um, meanwhile, over the years, we have the best practice, which is a rather formal specification can be picked up, has been picked up by industry and also communities. We have a tutorial and an FAQ, which also covers this example that we've seen here in the slides. Uh, the FAQ is not only speaking about reuse, but also about licensing in general, like to really onboard developers who are not familiar with licensing copyright on reuse, on licensing and demystifying a lot of things. We have the site helper tool that not only lins, but also helps in becoming reuse compliant. And we have the API, uh, basically reuse as a service. You can register your project online there and uh, get a badge which you can include. We have a number of reuse adopters already. So we know of 800 projects registered with the API. Oh, sorry, still. Okay, last slide or second last slide is uh, we have KDE, the, the large community which made or adopted reuse for their purposes in their community. On the corporate side, we have Siemens, Huawei, the European chapter, um, SAP, LifeRay, LGE, uh, and many others. At least these are the ones we know about. Partly the Linux kernel already, they're cleaning up uh, their long history. And the question is whether you are already reuse compliant, whether your projects are reuse compliant. If not, then these are your next steps. I just show, show the slide. You can participate in the project with code, by, by discussing on the mailing list, contribute code and integrate reuse in your community. So there are plenty of options and I would love to uh, discuss perhaps later with you how we can make you reuse compliant in your projects. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm.